And that's why I was saying where I think the other the the car that they had built, the first all-wheel drive E36 that was in Poland, yeah. that they crashed it during testing. These cars, they're very neutral. Um, kind of like how your super is. Mm -hmm. If you ever like, you know, if you ever like punch in the rain or anything like that and the car kind of kicks out, it's snappy. It's snappy, yeah. but you counter steer it a little bit and it's very natural. The car kind of just right. walks back and it's very balanced. Yeah. BMWs are like that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, Toyota. Which is why, which is why probably the S2000 kind of. Yeah, you know. the you know S2000 MR2 stuff like that. They, Similar. They, they, Similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the S2000 is better, but the MR2 is yeah. very snappy. We don't like that. Um, but BMWs are very neutral, and E36 is even more so. I've been driving these cars turbo for a long time, and I've been you know beating the hell out of them and driving them really hard. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening is that the car kicks out a little bit. You counter steer it like any other rear wheel drive car. Right. Not like Mustangs, though. We. <laughs> Joe covered that. Joe covered that in another episode. Yeah. Um, the car, car counter steers a little bit and it straightens out. You can either lift or stay in it. It'll straighten out and it won't, it won't give you too much drama. Yeah. But with the all-wheel drive, what ends up happening is that the entire drive line sits about an inch and a half or two inches forward and the wheel sits forward also. So that mm. now your center line of the wheel is more forward, but your shock tower doesn't change. And now even with like the most aggressive caster or camber um adjusters up top yeah the caster is almost fully out so like what the caster does is that it allows the wheel to return to center without too much drama okay. that's why motorcycles have the more caster they have the more they want to drive straight right motorcycles have the shot have the uh you know the forks that go forward right and right. that's the caster so think of your suspension mounting point on the on the car the same mm -hmm. way when you move the entire center line of the wheel forward right your caster is now f almost fully gone what ends up happening is like when the car starts to starts to slide, you try to you try to steer it right. You try to you know correct it. You try to counter steer it. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is that it starts snapping, and now you get an unstable you know um, flip back and forth. Right. And it's been sketchy a few times, and that's why I think they crashed that car during testing. Mm -hmm. The other thing also, um, something that I learned about when you're going all wheel drive. Yeah. Um. I when I did the old drive system on this car, I made the front and the rear gearing different. Okay. So like you know people say all right when people cars go wheel drive you have to have the same uh, you have to have the same tire in the front and the back. Right. And the reason for that is because if the tires are mismatched you'll tear up the transfer case or tear up the differentials or the transmission. The whole thing is mm -hmm. going to get messed up if your tire sizes are wrong and it's not made to be like that. But what I ended up happening was I have a longer gear in the front. So I have a, uh, I have a 3.07 ratio front diff and I have a 315 ratio rear diff. And with that, in, and now what that allows me to do is to keep a staggered tire so that the car still looks rear wheel drive. You couldn't tell that it was, you know, you, yeah. you would look at the car and you'd be like, all right, yeah, BMW, bigger tires in the back, small tire in the front. That's normal. Not this one. You know, I did it like that so that the mod, so that I can have the staggered tire. But the other thing is also you have to calculate then the mile an hour in every single gear for the tire size that you're going to run. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what we kind of spoke about earlier. Yeah. To, which we so, can get into. Um, can you talk about that? What we spoke about earlier in terms of like gearing and, and before so, we even get into the whole, the whole outline of the all wheel drive yeah. system. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, what we were talking about was that, uh, that a lot of people say that BMW, that if you had a BMW and a Mopar or, you know, a, a Chevy yeah. with the same horsepower that the BMW is going to beat it normally. And, and, you know, they say it's because of, you know, the power delivery or just the, you know, the, the chassis or it's so much lighter. The real reason is because of the gearing. So BMWs for a long time, and this is before the ZF8 and all that, they always had the correct, like a very, very good close ratio transmission that wasn't too aggressive. Um, Hondas are very notorious for having a close ratio transmission. What that means is that the ratio percentage drop from one gear to the next is very small. So if you're at the limiter in first gear and it's like eight or 9,000 RPM, you hit the next gear, it only drops back like, you know, two, maybe 2,500 RPM. Yeah. And it keeps you in that power band so that it rips through the next gear. Right. Right. And you do that on cars that have less torque. And the reason for that is because the gearing is your torque multiplier. So okay. when you have more aggressive gearing, it'll rip through the gear faster. And when you have more RPM, you'll get the same mile an hour as 
a car that has longer gearing but less RPM. You know, okay. and the and what ends up happening is that the reason that BMWs are really good, and this is what it is, this is what I think, is because they've always they've had fifth gear be the one to one in their manual transmission cars. So you got first, second, third, fourth are all multipliers. So the cars are pulling much harder in those gears. When you say multipliers, though, can you kind of explain a little um, bit? Basically, it like is give me a, a basic example. It's a gear basic. ratio over the one to one. Okay, and one to one is is, is one, one to one is direct drive. So, okay. uh, in a manual transmission, when you hook when you hook, you know, normally on like domestic most domestic cars yeah. and um, some other cars, when you hit fourth, that's your one to one gear. That is input shaft connected to the output shaft, and that is pretty much your engine turning the differential. Okay. Now, any gear below that is a multiplier. What that means is that it's a ratio greater than one. Okay. And when you have a ratio greater than one, it gives you one times that for the power so let's say let's say your first gear is 4.2 or 4.0 okay for easy that's four times the amount of torque than you would get from your engine in fifth gear you're getting it times four okay okay and that's spitting it to the rear wheels that's why you get the yank now the car goes now you hit the next gear which let's say it's a two it's a two to one ratio mm -hmm. now that okay now you're getting twice the amount of torque that you would get from your fifth in that and it's written it's pull, propelling the car forward you end up you have to find the perfect balance you can go too far one way and the car feels like a dog and you can go too far the other way and the car has no top end right so the reason that i feel like being was were always very very competitive is because you had a car like you know the older ones you had a car that came with two like the e36 you had a car that came with 240 horsepower mm -hmm. and they had a uh, good ratio transmission where first, second, third, fourth were all on were all over the one to one gear, and then fifth was your one to one gear. Right.